welcome. My name is Kate. And I'm Mark. And we want to just take a moment to have you become a part of this virtual worship and to give you some instructions so that you can really feel like you're participating with us today. The first thing you can do is you can go get a candle and intentionally light that candle just like we light candles here in the church. And you can set this part as a holy time and a holy space for you to worship with us. You can also go get some bread right now. And as we consume the consecrated bread here, you can symbolically participate from your own home, knowing that you're worshiping with us. The Holy Spirit moves in mysterious ways, in, and even in the virtual world. And if you need special prayers, we hope that you'll go to our website at jaxcathedral.org. And under contact, you'll find a way to reach us. May God bless you.
Testing, testing.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith, to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, 
Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swam and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And so God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God said that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life. I have given ear every green plant for food, and it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus, the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested 
on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. O oh Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what is man that you should be mindful of him? The son of man that you should seek him out. You have made him but little lower than the angels. You adorn him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beast of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever walks in the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord.
In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. There is a beautiful book that was published recently by James A.K. Smith. It is called How to Inhabit Time. The book opens with James talking about the darkest moment in his life. He was suffering from a black depression. He did not know where it came from or why. But he found himself in such despair that he did not know how to keep on living. It was difficult to breathe. He wanted to die. Not knowing what to do, he dragged himself into a counselor's office one afternoon. And thank God, it was a good counselor. James sat on the sofa in that office with no idea what to say, where to begin, or how to even express his despair. So the counselor spoke first. He said, James, I want you to take this piece of paper and pencil, and I want you to draw a map of your childhood home. James took the pencil in his hand and as he began to draw, he remembered how in high school he had wanted to be an architect. Memories came flooding back into his mind as the pencil moved across the paper. Remembering the garage where his father repaired snowmobiles. Remembering the steep staircase that led down to the basement room with the wall paneling and the tiny window where James was terrorized by his father. remembering the blue floral sofa that he and his mother and brother sat on when their father told them that they had to leave. Remembering the two bedrooms on the second floor of that split-level house on Snake Tail Drive, how he and his brother loved their bedrooms, but then after they moved out, how they were erased as the children of his father's mistress moved in. James said that mapping that childhood home, it was like groping in the dark. And gradually, in glimpses, remembering pieces of who he is and why he struggles. 
not understanding everything, not remembering everything, but getting glimpses and orientation of sorts. Piecing together his memory and beginning to heal. When human beings try to comprehend the Almighty, we are quite literally groping in the dark. There is no way that the human brain could comprehend the maker of the universe, but we try to find out a little bit to orient ourselves here and there. We know that we're going to die, that our physical lifespan is limited, but we don't know when and we don't know how. We don't know if it will hurt it will be peaceful. There is so much that we don't know. The first humans, we believe, thought of God as many. In multiple cultures all over the planet, generally, Human beings thought of there must be a god of the sea because, well, the sea is so unpredictable and we're not controlling it. Maybe someone else was. I mean, there's such a difference between the calm waters and, and the tidal waves. Who does that? There must be a god of the air who could decide between the soft caress of a breeze on your cheek and the violent wind of a tornado. Someone must control that, so there must be a god of the air, and a god of the sea, and perhaps a god of the mountain. In the Judeo-Christian tradition, our ancestor Abraham was given this revelation that all of these gods were really one, that there was one who created all the world, and this revelation was incredible. It was a huge leap forward in human consciousness. And for thousands of years, and still today, we believe it to be true. But when Jesus came, he opened up for us an even more profound understanding of God than just that God is one. Now, as an Episcopal priest, I'm going to offer my completely biased opinion here. But I would go to toe-to-toe -to -toe with any Hindu, Buddhist, or Hasidic Jew when it comes to our understanding of God. You see, I believe that the concept of the Trinity is the most enlightened, most profound glimpse of the Almighty that exists on the earth. And I believe that if we really could comprehend or even absorb some of the faculties of this mysterious concept of the Trinity that would transform the way human beings interact with one another and with the earth. I believe it is what I would say the least inadequate understanding of God that there is in all of the human race. The concept of the Trinity began when Jesus, in the resurrected form, as we hear in the Gospel of Matthew, he's standing on a mountain in the Galilee. He's about to leave them, and he gives them some very specific instructions. He says, go out into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now, no one had ever said that before. 
No one had ever called God by three names. But we know that Jesus had referred to God as Abba, which means Dada or Mama, the first word of a baby to love the one that's caring for and providing for that child. Abba, 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 Abba. We know that Jesus used that intimate word to refer to God. And we know that by this time, the disciples were beginning to comprehend that Jesus, too, was also God. And we know that Jesus had already spoken to them at the Last Supper about giving them a spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, the Paraclete, all these names he used for some mysterious presence that would remain with them after he left. But this was the first time that Jesus had used all three words together. Three in one. One in three. And it makes absolutely no sense at all. And that, my friends, may be the most important point of all. The Trinity makes no sense if you try to make sense of it by saying, oh, it's like water which is like ice and liquid and gas, you're creating a heresy. I think that one's called modalism. If you try to understand the Trinity with your rational mind, it cannot be done. And that's the point. It's to remind us that we cannot intellectually wrap our minds around God. When we try to do so, If we get our minds around whatever it is we think is God, it's not God. We've made it too small. I want to give you three primary perspectives on the Trinity. Three things that are amazingly important if we are to learn more about ourselves, if we are to grope in the dark trying to find our way to God. The first is this. God is not lonely. God is not alone. God has all community and all love within the divine self. You were not made because God wanted company. God already had company. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are in an eternal dance of community. And when it says that we are made in the image of God, it doesn't mean you as an individual or me as an individual. It means us together. The image of God is community. It is when we are together that we reflect God's nature. And it is not good for us to be alone. And so if we are to find God, we must find people. We must walk with other disciples. Jesus walked with disciples and women the whole of his ministry. Do not do this alone. You cannot find God by yourself. We need one another. The second point is that within God, there is all kinds of diversity. Do you think Father and Son and Holy Spirit are anything alike? They are totally, completely different from one another. And we as human beings limit ourselves if we don't expose ourselves to diversity all the time. There is a book by Christina Cleveland called Disunity in Christ. She talks about how it is human nature to want to hang out with people that look and think just like you. And when you hang out with people that look and think just like you, you think that they all are very complicated and very diverse. Like I think, well, women in their 50s, white women in their 50s, we're so different from one another. Some are fat, some are thin, some are progressive, some are conservative. But when I think about the Japanese culture, I think they're all the same. 
That's human nature. And if we don't break out of the group that link, looks and thinks like us, we limit our understanding of ourselves and of God. One of the greatest gifts of this cathedral is our diversity. Amen? Amen. If you want to know God, you go out and you find someone, maybe someone who is physically disabled, if you're not, and you ask them what their life is like, and you listen. You go out and you find someone who believes that they are a different gender from the one that they were born with, and you talk to them about what that is like, what it's like to live that way, what it's like to become fully the person they believe themselves to be. You find another culture from another part of the world. You find someone who's from somewhere far away, and you ask them, what is their life like? What was it like to grow up in their world? And every time we expose ourselves to people who think and look differently from us, we learn not only about ourselves, but we reflect the image of God because God is diverse and magnificent and beautiful. And lastly, and this is the hardest one of all, God is change. The number three is always out of balance with itself. It is always moving and dancing, learning and growing. And I don't know about you, but I don't always want to change. My son Max just graduated from high school, and a couple days ago I saw a picture of him in third grade looking so cute in his little uniform, and I started to cry because I don't really want him to change. I liked him like that. Why does he have to grow up? I, I love him as a young man, but I, he was so cute. Part of us wants to hold on to things. We want them to stay the way that they are, especially when we like them. We want the, our house to look the same. We want our worship to be just the same. We just want routine. But I'm sorry, God is change. Life is change. And to be fully alive means to lean into that change, to live in the present moment, to allow things to develop, to allow our minds to be expanded, to always be thinking that we don't know enough, that there's more we need to learn. It's terribly uncomfortable and can be terrifying. But we reflect the image of God when we embrace change. There is a reason why the church dedicates an entire Sunday to this concept of God. Because we are groping in the dark, trying to understand one who is so much more vast and complex and all-encompassing than we could ever comprehend. But there will be times when you will catch glimpses glimpses of such beauty, flashes of understanding that you never thought you could get. Reverence for something so much bigger than we will ever understand. The three, the one, the incomprehensible, the remarkable trinity of God. Amen.
standing together, let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page six of your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people will be read responsively. Please respond with the words, guide and strengthen us. Almighty and eternal God, your Holy Spirit moved over the waters in the beginning of creation. You formed the heavens and the earth and all their vast array. Form us in the likeness of your Son, Jesus, that we may grow in the knowledge and love of you and follow where you lead. Holy Spirit, bring peace to this broken world that we may learn to honor and respect one another. We especially pray for peace and reconciliation in Sudan and Ukraine. Holy Spirit, comfort the sick, the lonely, the hungry, the homeless, those who grieve and those who suffer. Holy Spirit, bless the city of Jacksonville Forgive us our sins and build the kingdom of God among us. Holy Spirit, embrace those who have died that they may be welcomed into your kingdom. We especially pray for Anna Fairfax and Jackie Fairburn. Holy Spirit, Reconcile all races and peoples so that we may live together in the unity that you envision. Holy Spirit, give us the wisdom and the discipline to nurture and maintain this planet. Holy Spirit, for yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome. We're so glad you're here this morning. If you are new or visiting, we have a little card in your pew called a connection card that you can fill out. 
If you are visiting online, welcome. You can go to jackscathedral.org slash welcome and tell us who you are so that we can send you our newsletter or answer any of the questions that you may have. We're so glad that you are here. Our blood mobile is parked out in front of the church. If you are physically able to give blood this morning, please consider doing so. The need here in the city of Jacksonville is great, and they'll give you a lot of good snacks too. So it's awesome. We are doing a lot this summer and starting a new series of classes. I hope you will go to the website or to which page of the bulletin here? Page 15 with a lot of what's going on right now. We're teaching a great class on the prayer book, which is a very complicated tool at 9 o'clock on Sundays. We also have a breakfast every Sunday at 9, so if you want to come early, we'd love to have you. And Mark and I have come up with a new offering this summer. Following this service at 11.30, we will begin a series which is called Conversations in Community. What we're trying to do is take some of these really sticky, tough subjects that are hitting our media, um, subjects that are often covered in very extreme and simplistic ways by the media, and bring an expert from our community to unpack the issue for us so that we can pray about it, understand it better, and perhaps take action on it. This morning, we're very blessed to have a faithful parishioner, John Caulfield, who for 30 years has been in the Foreign Service and was in charge of the affairs of the embassy in Venezuela for many years. He is going to talk this morning about immigration. So it will start at 11.30 right back here in the sanctuary. We will be live streaming it as well, and we hope that you'll join us. It will last about 30 to 40 minutes, and we hope that you'll learn a lot from these conversations. And next week, tell them about next week. We have a professor, Melissa, yes, coming. Yes, next week we're going to be talking about gerrymandering and voter rights and, and the increasing uh, political divide that's arisen in this country in recent decades from a sociological perspective. It should be a very interesting conversation, and these will be a fun way to kick off what we're doing all summer as we deal with issues that range from national down to local. Yeah, thanks. This evening, we're also going to invite you back. We're going to have the Bold City Brass here at 5 p.m. for a concert. We also are opening a new art exhibition today. You can either go look at it at Tolliver between church and the 1130 class here, or you can come back for the concert this evening and have a chance to, to visit and peruse then. So I certainly invite you to come back this evening at 5 p.m. for Bold City Brass and for Jack and, and Jay, Quilts, Paintings, and Drawings, which is the new art exhibit. It should be really wonderful to see there. Beautiful quilts, beautiful drawings, bright colors, very inspiring. The bookstore this month is highlighting a ministry called Global Mamas. This is a nonprofit that sells home goods. If you go buy some of them, it's a great way to support that ministry. Also, with this new art exhibition we're opening today, we've become part of the Art Walk, a downtown walk that looks at different art showings. And this Wednesday, at, um, from 5 to 8.30, they will have one of these art walks. The bookstore and Tolliver will be open for this event, so I invite you to certainly come downtown, participate in that, see some of our art, see some other art downtown, and go into the bookstore. As we read in Scripture, walk in, um, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give our thanks to the Lord our God. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and singing. We praise you and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favor on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. When directed by an usher, I invite you to come forward to the altar rail to receive communion in the old fashioned way, or if you wish to receive communion in a socially distant manner, you can come to this side altar here where you will be able to receive individual wafers in cups. After you've received communion, if you want to ask for, your pr for prayers for yourself or for others or for anyone in the world, I invite you to go to this side chapel here and there will be someone to pray with you. I can't forget when I was sad, head hanging down, and my soul feeling bad, but all I could say was, Lord, take my heart. And Jesus heard and saved me, and he gave me a new start. Oh, he sweet. I know he sweet I know storm clouds may rise and strong winds may blow but I'll tell that I found a Savior, and he's sweet, I know. Sometimes I am tried by Satan's snares. And my burdens, they seem so hard to bear. And I'm talked about whatever, whatever I do. But I know a Savior, and he'll take me on through. Don't you know that he's sweet? I know, yes, he's, he's sweet, I know. Storm clouds may rise, and strong 
winds may blow, but I'll tell the world wherever I may go that I found a Savior, and He's sweet, I know.
Continuing on page 10 of the bulletin, together let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.
Alleluia, Alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia.